Hey guys, today we are going to do a little weaving lab, a weaving demonstration so that we can fully wrap our heads around um, the techniques of basic weave patterns and kind of how it happens. Um, we're not really able to build an entire loom, so what I usually do in class is use these makeshift pretend paper looms <laughs> that I've got out of cardboard. Um, so you can, again, in class I would typically have like a skein of yarn that I would give everybody and we would make these little cardboard looms and practice that way. So I'll show you um, this way and then I'll show you a couple of other ways you can do this as well. So this is just a little piece of scrap cardboard, a cereal box or a food box or something like that will probably work. And I've just made little slits kind of at equal lengths all the way across. This one has one, two, three, four, five. Um, this one has more because it's just a longer piece. It's however long you want to make it. It can be pretty small. You know, this is just maybe um, like three inches by three inches or four inches, something like that. So this works really, really well. Um, and you can take some yarn. And what we can do is go ahead and start putting in the warp threads. These are gonna be uh, our strong threads that are gonna run long ways in this direction um, and are gonna be locked in place for us to weave into. And so because I've got the little slits in this cardboard, I can just kind of stick it in and it stays in place. It doesn't really come out. It does move a little bit, but you know, stays in place pretty well. You can use um, some tape, some scotch tape, some masking tape, whatever you've got on hand if you want if it's moving around. Next, I'm just gonna wrap it. So see how I'm just going through the top and then going through the bottom, wrapping it so that they're straight up and down. On the back, it's gonna look like it's going at an angle. That's fine. On the front, oops, looks like you got a little knot. <laughs> Try not to let that happen while you're, while you're weaving. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm just gonna wrap this around until I've used up all of the spaces on my cardboard loom, okay? And then I can just leave that kind of hanging or tape it in place as well. So again, these are my warp threads. They're locked in. Next, I'm gonna get some yarn and you can even still be like attached to the skein if you want. And I'm gonna start weaving. And so it's super simple in this particular pattern. Um, I'm just going to start lacing it together. With a woven fabric, that's really all that it is. It's just two or more yarns interlaced together. Um, in this case, I'll just do like a simple basket weave. So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, pretty simple, right? You can kind of see what I've done there. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave just a little tail here, but then I'll continue with my long length um, of fabric that I've got here, and I can just wrap around and now head in this direction, okay? So watch, um, I'm just gonna now do the opposite of what I just did on that previous row. So I was over here, so now I'm gonna go under. Over, and now under over, and now under, over, and now under. So already I've got two rows here and you can see what's happening. I've also started to get like some tension on the side so you can just keep that and make like adjustments as you like. I would now take it back the other way and you can see what's gonna start happening. So again, I'll just loop that around do the opposite of what I just did. So under, over, under, over, under, over, and under again. And again, now I could wrap it back this way. Um, it looks pretty messy as you go, but again, that's where you can go back in and adjust your tension slightly. And then what would happen if we were using a loom is we would every so often push this up really tightly, right? And then you can see that it's starting to make um, what looks like a tighter weave of fabric, okay? Um, so this would be the basic principle. Um, and you can see I've got a couple other examples shown like with a different um, type of thread, like here I had some yarn and I had some twine, but I'm doing the same basic thing, kind of wrapping it around. Um, and then here, I've done a few more 
rose with, I think this was like a packaging <laughs> twine that I had on hand, um, or like some thin rope, something like that. Um, and then I basically went until I ran out, uh, which is here. But you can start to see that it's looking like what you would think of as a woven fabric, right? Um, it looks like almost like a basket, again, which is, this is a really simple plain weave, a basket weave, just over, under, over, under. You could obviously do different patterns with weaving. Um, say, instead of me going over, under, over, under, I, I went over two and then under two, over two and then under two, or something similar to that. It's all about um, sort of counting, um, you know, and coming up with a pattern to make different types of weaves. And then in the end, what happens is, and this one might be a little bit smaller, maybe like similar to this size, but I would take this off um, and the selvage ends up being on the side here. And selvage um, is, it's the end basically, and you can see it better here where I've got a few more rows. This you can see isn't going to unravel. It's because every single time it's wrapped around on the end and it happens on both sides. So this is called the selvage of the fabric. It's the ends of the fabric. When you're setting up your loom, your fabric, can only ever be this wide where the selvage is ending, right? But I could, in theory, if I, especially if I tied more thread onto this, I could keep weaving in this direction <laughs> sort of indefinitely, right? But my selvage ends where the weft thread has stopped on the last two warp threads, um, this is a nice, a nice end that is not going to unravel. So what I would do if I was removing this is I would actually just um, clip in the back, all of these off, right? Like cut it right down the back, like this, right? And now we've got two. And I can take this off and just tie my loose ends. And I would do that on the end here, okay? And then like, cut these two and show you what I mean to. Ooh, my scissors aren't very sharp. These two, I would tie together, okay? These two I would tie together, these two I would tie together, these two I would tie together, and so forth. And that's how I ended up with this little guy that I was actually able to take off of my cardboard loom. So it ends up, once you pack it together and once you tie it all off, um, being a small little sample, but you've got a woven piece of fabric that you just created really simply. You can see that this is my selvage edge. This is the edge where each each piece is wrapped around so it won't unravel. And this is the edge where I've tied little knots. You can see tied little knots, so I've pulled it off. So this is how I might do this um, example if you had some yarn to use or some thread or some twine or rope or something similar, right? Um, you're gonna make yourself a little paper cardboard loom like this, just as small as you want. I'm just looking for a small sample just so I can see that you are getting the gist and that you could identify your warp thread, your weft thread, and your selvage edge, okay? And if you didn't have some yarn, <laughs> we could get rid of these things. And what you could do is even use um, some plastic bags, right? So I've got a Kroger plastic bag <laughs> that I just went ahead and like cut in half so that I've got really long pieces. I'm just kind of showing you I'm in mid process, right? And I can continue to cut little strips of this. Let me see if I can get the scissors started here for the camera. I could cut strips of plastic. I could do it as like a double piece or a single piece, however wide you want to make it. But plastic is something that we definitely probably have on hand, some kind of plastic bag. And works pretty well to emulate a, a yarn or um, a piece of thread or a fiber, basically, because it's long, <laughs> right? Longer than it is wide. And if you kind of bunch it up and twist it a little bit, similar to the way you would do a yarn, it's kind of strong, like you can't really break it that easily. So we could take our strip <laughs> plastic bag and do the exact same example. See how I'm just going in? This might end up being super cute. <laughs> 
Okay, so I started there. And I've almost used that whole piece. You just clip this. So there we go. I've got my warp threads and I can cut another, let me get a nice long piece if I can. Try not to rip it. A plastic, and you could obviously cut this a lot neater. <laughs> but now I've got a nice long bit of plastic. I can give it a twist, make it a little neat, make it like a yarn. And I can do the same example over, under, over, under. And because this is a really small sample, it'll go a lot quicker. Now I'll come from this side and I'm leaving just a little tail here and I'll do the opposite now for this next row. Oop. Oop. Definitely a little harder to get the plastic might be worth to actually take the time to uh, twist it gently <laughs> into a better yarn. But good thing we know how to spin fiber into yarn from last week's lab. And you could also like to make your life easy so that you can easily see which one is which. You could do um, one color plastic bag for the warp threads and a different color plastic bag for the weft threads. That way you wouldn't be pulling on something you don't mean to pull on since it can be kind of hard to see. But you can see what's starting to happen. I am getting like a little basket already and it doesn't take much because the plastic bag yarn is kind of a bulky yarn, right? It's a bulky <laughs> textured yarn. I feel like it wouldn't take much at all I could probably do this one piece. And get my tiny, tiny little sample. And definitely watch your tension as you go. It's kind of addictive once I start. And then I get again, I could push it tighter, right? And you can see I'm starting to get <laughs> my woven piece of plastic fabric, right, that I could make. I could do the same thing where I take this off and I could try to tie the ends. You could also tape it, something like that, um, to try to get it off. Um, see what you can do. You can play around with best practices. Again, give it a little twist. Uh, but that's how you could try this with plastic bags, which you definitely probably have on hand from the grocery store. Another way that you can do this is to use notebook paper, and I've already started cutting it, but I just took some notebook paper and cut on the lines, which made my life really easy. And now I've got a little bit of yarn or a little bit of fiber, okay? We could pretend. This one definitely doesn't have um, as much <laughs> stretch to it as the actual fibers or yarns or the plastic bags. Um, that's the thing with woven fabric in general, I'll go back to my sample, it doesn't have um, a lot of stretch. It's pretty much going to stay put. Um, if you stretch it in this direction, you know, I really don't have a lot of give. If you stretch it in this direction, I really don't have a lot of give. You do have a little bit of stretch when you stretch it here on this 45 degree angle. Uh, basically, any woven fabric, as you probably read in the textbook, is going to have what's called a grain line. And so it's easy to see when it's still on the loom. But again, our warp threads, this is the grain of the fabric. It goes in this direction. The weft threads go in this perpendicular direction. Also a grain. This is the warp grain, the straight grain, and this is the cross grain going across the weft grain. Um, so again, you're not going to have a lot of stretch on those two grains, but on what's called the bias, which is the 45 degree angle across, you do have a little bit of stretch. So that's something that you could end up using to your advantage in the way that fabric drapes if you hang it in this direction, the way that it kind of falls over something, right? If you hang it like this, it's really just going to fall simply, but you might get a little more creative drape kind of if you're going on the stretchy, the stretchy 45 degree angle. 
But again, our paper, not really gonna stretch much <laughs> one way or the other. Maybe if we weave it, we can get a little stretch out of it. Um, what I did with the paper is I got a piece of um, computer paper just so that I could have like a difference instead of using the lined Nopa paper. And I cut some strips and I taped them on one side. You could also tape them down on this side and that's imagining, you know, just like using our loom and locking them in place. Um, or you could leave the bottom open for now. It's totally fine, whatever kind of makes it easy. And then you can take additional cut pieces and do the same exercise. So over under, whew, might just be again a test of patience. And this might also be a time where you'd want to use like a different color paper if you had it or a different color cardboard or you can use a marker or a pen or something and color it just so that you can easily see the difference when you're doing it so your eyes don't go crazy. So again, I'm just doing simple plain basket weave over under over under. I feel like I already went wrong here. Oh look, I skipped one. See, and you can see <laughs> where you messed up. So I'm gonna pull it out on that side and fix it. There we go. Okay. And now I can make sure that this is the right way. There we go. No, no, I just did it identically. Okay. Woo. I swear, having two different colors <laughs> would really help so that you can see the difference. Okay. I think I'm doing it right now. But all of this, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> see, I've got a little basket happening here. I'll do this third one too so you can see as it starts to come together. And then with this one, with the paper, you couldn't really tie off the ends, definitely. So taping it might be good. And what would probably happen is just the tension of it, see how I'm pushing it nicely together? The tension of this should hold it in place and I should be able to tape like both ends um, or maybe even like cut it off of the back of the paper. And probably I can just leave this because these aren't really falling out. And then you'd have your little woven, you know, kind of paper sample. And again, you can see from this, um, I've got my warp threads, I've got my wet threads. And in this case, you don't really have, um, you have a selvage end, but it's not really locked in place like the other selvages. But you can still indicate that if this was one long continuous yarn, um, that that would be your selvage edge. And then again, sometimes you do have a selvage where what they might do instead is like sew along this line to lock it in place from unraveling. And they would purposefully trim this maybe to get like a decorative fringy edge, something like that. You know, you could trim it with like a funny scissor <laughs> that has a funny shape or something. I don't know, and have a decorative edge on the side. Um, so you could use paper to do this, like you can use a paper bag to do this. Um, lots of different ways that we can do our weaving sample. So um, I either want you to do a paper version or a yarn version, um, but what I ultimately want you to get is some kind of little sample like this. Ideally, you end up taking it off of the cardboard loom that you made and have it separately so that you can hold it or photograph it or document it. Um, show me the front, show me the back, and I want you to somehow, on your document, again, you could put this into a document where you could put in text, I want you to tell me which one is your warp, which one is your weft, and where your selvage is, okay? Um, and this will indicate to me that you fully understand weaving in its most basic form, all right?